Hello and welcome to this short tutorial video in which I want to show you how to uh, set the software-based motion detection in your Insta 2K Plus security camera. First of all, we open the web interface, so it should similar like this. Um, and then on top left, you go to settings. Here we go to alarm and there we go to areas. If you just have unpacked the camera and installed it, then the area section should look like this. So there's some rectangles in four different colors that we have placed over the image. And now you can simply um, click into the first, into the red one, um, the area and drag it anywhere you would like to place it in the image. Um, on the right side, you see which area is currently selected. So number one is the red one. This is currently already selected. If we want to change any of the other areas, then we would first have to select it and then we can change it. For example, the yellow one, area four, I will select it here and then we can drag it anywhere we like. So let's go back to the red area. We can now use one of the four corner sides and place it over the area that we want to protect. In our case, we are placing it here over the door. I will now place it like this. And then we are, let's say, protecting the door, or at least we are checking at the door side uh, if there's a motion or if there's no motion. Now, there's some things to consider. Um, first of all, now you see I have selected the whole door frame, but actually only this area where I'm circling with my mouth is the area where the door is opening and closing. So I recommend we're only selecting this area where the actual door is. And at the same time, we are moving the points a little bit down because we want to have the biggest change possible inside the software-based area. And if we are we always have to consider a person that walks in and out of this door. Now this person will never be as high as the door frame or let's say in very rare cases uh, the person will be as high as the door frame. So we can already lower the area because otherwise on top here nothing will probably ever change in this area. Uh, next I select the blue area which we will place here over the driveway. I will place it in a, let's say, not so perfect uh, position, just in order to show you what can be approved, improved. So now you see here, I have placed it over the driveway that leads here into the garage. But the thing is now, let's say a car drives over it, the car will change certain amount of this area, which is okay. But the car also has a certain height, so we can, um, we can also cover the height by adding a few more points. Now what you can do is you can press the shift button at your keyboard and at the same time you go over the line here and then you will see the a new dot coming up with a plus on it. That means we will add this, um, this new point. You can just simply make one click with your mouse and then this point is added. Now if we press shift again, go again over the, over the line, we can add another button and uh, if if we actually press shift and we go over this um, point that we have added we we will see a small minus coming up and then we can also remove this point again so you can add um, unlimited amount of points and then place them on a line and then now we just simply drag them like over here. So if now a car drives through, the car also has the certain height and will also change a certain amount of um, area here in the upper on the upper side. Now on the right side you see the sensitivity level. Um, this is um, the level of change that has to happen inside the area. Now you can, as a roundabout, you can always say that the rest to 100 is what needs to be changed um, in percentage. So let's say we are setting area one, which is the red one, to 75. That means 25% or more have to change inside the area in order to trigger an alarm in the camera. 
So if we take the blue area, which is now our driveway, this one is set to 90. That means 10% or more have to change in order to cause an alarm. We can lower this a little bit to, let's say, 80. So 20% have to change if a car drives in and uh, then the alarm should be triggered. Now we have two more areas. Um, we can just simply place them whoop, place them here and then the yellow one we can place here over the driveway. We have two cars that can be just used as a reference uh, here. So what we can actually see is that this car here let's let's say we are setting this one to 90 that means 10 percent of the yellow area has to change in order to cause an alarm now the yellow uh, the white car does probably change 10 percent so that should be okay but we can see here the red car that is only slightly visible in the in the area that one will not change 10 percent so it depends a little bit on what you want to um, yeah protect and um, the further the object is, the smaller it will be. So the smaller the area should also be in order for the object to uh, change as much as possible inside the area. Now what we could do here is in order to make the red car also, um, to also have the red car, we could add another point. We could cover this one here. The problem is that there's a kind of figure here so that will cover the covers the car a little bit. Um, yeah, you you would eventually have to test in order to see when this car will also um, trigger the alarm. You also don't want to have the public road uh, as a, on the area, so have to you have to see and test. And uh, I mean, once a person gets out of the car and walks towards the camera, then at one point the camera will. Uh, then start recording. Now, this is, I think, it for the areas in general. So you can use the shift button to add um, points on the line or you can remove them. Another option would be that below the video, uh, the image here, you have this uh, hand button. Once you select that one, that means you can track the area around and you can use the points to change the the area and if you press this plus minus button uh, that means you can now just go over the line without pressing the shift button you can add uh, a point or you can remove the point and once you have added the points that you need you just simply go back to the hand button and then you can shift the points around or the whole area once you have uh, set everything then you go to apply at the bottom right and now everything is saved inside our camera. I will close this window here and then we go to alarm and actions because here there's some things to consider. On the alarm trigger area, we can uh, link the areas that we have just set with our PIR sensor. Actually, every Insta camera has a PIR sensor integrated, at least every 2K plus model. So you can activate a PIR sensor, which is reacting to um, yeah, heat changes. And once the PIR detects something, if it's linked with the areas, then it will check if one of the four areas has also triggered an alarm. And only if that's the case, then the alarm as such will be uh, triggered by the camera. Now here you have the option to link the separate areas, for example, in our case, we had this red area, the area one back here on the door. Now for the PIR, it might be a little bit too far to detect something uh, on this door side because it, there's a whole street between and bushes. So in order for the detection to be a little bit better, we can say that this area here, the red area, area one, we only want to detect by software detection. So we on, only by software, if there's a change, then we want the software to trigger. And the other three areas for the driveway and the parking lot, we want to link them together with the PIR. So in this case, um, the, the three areas are linked and both the PIR and the areas have to be um, 
causing an alarm in order to, to trigger an event then. And uh, for the area one, this one will work by itself just as the software detection. And then you have additional options to, and like once you know that everything works, like I would recommend uh, having it run for a few days and I will shortly go to cancel here and then system and system locks. Now, if you go to the locks, you can see which area has caused an alarm. For example, here, uh, PIR and motion area two have triggered an alarm. And here, motion area one, you see there is no PIR because area one, we didn't link it. Um, so area one has triggered an alarm. And then um, just by having a look into the log file, you can see uh, if everything works accordingly, if every event was detected. And now if you know, like once you know that it all is good and everything is detected correctly, then you can actually have the option to enable the object detection. And here you can say uh, it should require a person to be detected in order to cause an alarm, or it should be required to um, detect a vehicle, for example. And if now we say apply, then only if an alarm area plus in, in case of the PIR, uh, if in case it's linked, uh, only if that causes an alarm, then the object detection will check if there was a person or a vehicle inside um, this alarm. And only if this is the case, then the alarm action will be triggered, which could be, for example, sending you an email or uh, recording the video to SD card or FTP or the cloud. Um, yeah, so I hope you get a short overview on how to do the settings for motion detection. In case you wish us to explain anything further for the camera, please write in the comments. We're more than happy to create another video explaining you whatever you are asking for. And um, I hope you have a lot of fun with your camera and uh, the, I hope to see you at the next video. Have a nice day and enjoy your camera.